You know, Lorenzo used to be my best friend back in eighth grade. When I first moved to North Providence, I didn't have anybody else. And out of nowhere, ever since last year, he started changing. Like that D baby? It's getting to a point where I don't like being around him. He, he's weird, he touches me. Honestly and truly, I am sick and tired of the abuse. He needs to be punished. What the hell? What the hell, y'all? I'm just not preaching on bulls like that. I'm just, just really getting to a point where I can't even <clears throat> be around him anymore, you know? Just all the touching, all the uh, abuse, uh, physically, verbally, sexually. It's taking a toll on my brain. I'm open. Cut! Lorenzo! Come here! I need to talk to you. Mm -hmm. You have to stop shaking. Please. I can't Please stop. stop. No. I'm sorry. No shaking. Okay? Stop being weird. You're being a weirdo. <laughs> they keep complaining, but I don't see a problem with it. And if they keep complaining, I'm going to touch them even more. You see how rambunctious they are? They really deserve it. Of We're tired, tired of this, crap, Lorenzo. Bro. You want to stop? What are you guys you doing? You have to stop. Why are you guys all stop. over here? You have to stop. I don't want to stop. Come on. Why are you doing being here? Why are you bringing me in here? Just be quiet. Why are you bringing me in here? So, I decided to bring you in here because we're fed up with the way you've been acting recently. And I think you need to go to therapy. Gold? I wouldn't say that. How do you think how do you think you've been acting? You guys are clearly saying yes. It's like yes, Lorenzo, I want it. We are. You are. No one's saying that. Oh, here it's we just go. If we reported it does not mean yeah. anything, actually. I think you're just insane. Yeah, I think you're sick and Mentally you need help. Ill. I'm sick. You need to go to therapy. Therapy doesn't even work. You it can't that. tame me. It can't tame this beast. You don't know that. Get down. Get down. Get down. Get down. You're going to therapy. Baby. I love you, Mr. Martin. Okay, welcome to the interview. Uh, can you say your name for the My name is Brendan Valley. What's your position? Oh, I'm a math teacher at North oh, Providence. Very good. Um, well, let's start the interview then. Thank you for the interview, Mr. Isabella. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Just, um, said your name. Can I have what you do, what your occupation? I am a school teacher in the district of North Providence, and I work at North Providence High School. I also work for the uh, teachers, local teachers union, 920. I do all of their books. I'm a golf coach here, and I'm also the treasurer here at the high school. Thank you for the interview, Ms. Mazayan. You're welcome. Could you just happy to be here? Of course. Uh, you want to start again by saying like what you do here? Sure. I'm uh, Ms. Mazayan, the Social Studies Department Chair at North Providence High School. I teach American History and Psychology. Welcome back to the Joe Stein Show, and here we have three contestants today. First up is Lorenzo. He's a little touchy, a little invasive, and we have. Malik here, nice African-American gentleman. And we have Evan Albuquerque, who is French-Canadian, so you can make fun of him in the comments. All right, so let's get started. Well, first up, let's get a nice personal introduction to our contestants. Yo, what's up, bro? I'm Lorenzo. 
I'm a fertabulous furry. I got my first who leaves in the backstage. You know what I'm saying? We get wild up in there, rambunctious. Yes, sir. You, Mom Malik. As Jacob said, my name is Evan Albuquerque. I'm a French Canadian man. I come straight from Syrup Land, uh, from the rough streets of Toronto. All right, first question for Lorenzo is. What does your ideal first date look like? Well, my ideal first date is going to Anime Expo Boston with all my stinky little furry friends and rubbing each other's furry balls. My dad left when I was two. Mm. All right, and Evan, what is your answer? My dream is to take a nice, dreamy, big black woman through my jungle. <laughs> All right, before we get into our next question, we're going to have a little mini game where we have to name the movie that this quote is from. So first up, say hello to my little friend, Malik. Kirk Cobain blew his head off April 5th, 1994. Okay. What is Scarface? Correct. So question number two. What is your body count? Ah, legally excluding the children, zero. Three right. in my basement. Mm. Mm. 45 on a good day. Is that some role play stuff? All right, welcome back everybody to the Joe Stein Show. Uh, we just had to have an emergency break as one of our contestants was were giving very concerning answers and we had to call authorities to investigate that. So we will update you with any new information we hear. And the winner by default is Mr. Cardillo. Yes. Yes, sir. So, uh, yes, sir. If you all enjoyed. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. <laughs> Whoa. British government in order to show their displeasure with no tax or with taxation without their representation. So. But was it, is tea, as you know, is the most consumed beverage on earth. Is it? I yeah, I mean, I guess. Top. Yeah, sure. Probably more coffee. Yeah. yeah, more plentiful. Well, sure. Obviously, water is life, but tea. Yeah. People love tea. Who likes drinking tea? British people. British, yeah. Love drinking yeah. Tea. Four o'clock, tea time. And because Americans, you know, they were British. Mm -hmm. So, do you think tea and coffee is like a way of separating the identity of the Americans? And Interesting. The yeah. I mean, in terms of just what becomes... Food is a defining factor of culture, so well, sure. Well, in the tea party then, yes. if the Americans didn't want to be British, why did they drink tea? Well, because it was a response to the fact that they were still British and they were following British rule and the consumption of tea at their, you know, at their, I'm, I mean, Americans still drink tea, so we're still drinking tea, regardless of if we're British or not. I would say even tea so could we probably really, started in Asia. I don't are we think really British, revolutionary British. then? What happened? Well, they're gone now. So, do you think going back to those ancient civilizations, they would have been, they would have grown better if they hadn't created like physical currency? Um, I don't think so. I think uh, currency uh, allows us to trade out different skills for for something that we can then use to buy other things. For example, if there was no currency, if I wanted uh, food, for example, from somebody else, right, I would have to perform some type of a duty, whether it be clean their house or you know, rake their yard or whatever it was to get that service, right? So I'd have to perform, I'd have to trade with that person specifically. But what money allows, like me, I come to work for the town of North Providence, I provide the service of teaching, and as a result, they pay me, and then I can take that currency and apply it to anything that I want on the outside. Yeah, it's, it's that I need. Then. Exactly, versus being something that's very specific, and I think that's what you had when you had economies that just bartered. Well, Evan! You know exactly what I'm talking about. Whoa, 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 whoa!
I gotta apologize. Come okay. On. No! No! Not the toilet! Into the toilet! No! Before. He's right behind me, isn't he? In terms of, I don't know if you're familiar with basketball at all. Could you explain how, what 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 branch of mathematics did you teach again? What's that? What branch of mathematics did you teach again? I teach algebra and pre-calculus. And how could you say that these maths affect the, the legacy of famous players like LeBron James, famous wrestlers like, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin and Mr. Valley over here? How would you say that this affects the legacies of those people? Of those people? I don't know. LeBron didn't even go to college, so I don't know. Wow. And I'm so, pretty sure Stone Cold Steve Austin didn't go to college. Either. So, <laughs> <laughs> overall in American history, do yeah. you think... This is like the ultimate question. Oh. I've asked this before. I don't know how much you know about basketball, but looking at the American Revolution, you know, French Revolution, all the similarities, red, white, and blue, mm -hmm. all the teenaging. Overall, like, when that culminates, how do you think that affected LeBron's legacy? Oh, wow. <laughs> legacy. Well, um, he is one of the greatest basketball players to ever play in the league. And with that, I would say because of that, in America, we support and we want American greatness. And we look to our uh, heroes or we place heroism on people who become great. And so I guess that's what makes him part of this American legacy. He's he's one of the best to do it, and that's what we hope for. We want individuals who are great at what they do yeah. in order to keep this country great. And not sus. And not it's sus. Important. Well, very good then. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Susan, I think nice chatting I think with you. We're done. Yeah. Great. Good interview. Thank you. Well, you learned stuff today. Okay. How to drink tea? How to steal ideas from plays? Recipe for success, I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Guess we found it out then. Well, overall, I think, you know, we discussed great about that. Okay. Yo, 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 you already know. The most epic rap battle of history in this corner. You got your boy, Jesus of Nazareth. Woo! Yeah. Big man. Yes, sir. We got young Obama bin Laden dropping bombs, you know what I'm saying? Uh huh. Woo! Woo! I'm gonna crucify this fool. Yo, mm. my name Jesus. I, I turn wine to water every time I, I produce a court. You know I be sailing port to port. Look at your boy over here. He got polio. I'm gonna revive this fool. Hawk fit him in lock, 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 fit him in dot, hit him in side, side, lock, fit him in lock, fit him in Jesus, pieces with the Yeezus and the Yeezus, Jesus with the Jesus. Oh, folks, so urban, I'm going to rap in German. Oh, 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 Oh! Yo! Yeah. Damn, look at that! <laughs> yes, sir! 
Is that five? We can't do this and then the rise of Oh I'm recording. Oh. <laughs> 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 Wait, what is this? Oh, okay. Okay. This is an interesting no, it's, a, it's a serious question. Yes, Malik. Kurt Cobain killed himself April 5th, 1950. <laughs> I have a question. Why have you used your influence to spread awareness about the Magnolian slaves? Magnolian. Magnolian. Close. Ma Magnolian. Mongolian. 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 Mongol guy. I'm Ryan Epstein. This is John C. Dickenbaus. And we're sponsored. This segment is sponsored by Grinder. If you need a hookup today, go to grinder.com. You can just keep it about the film. All right, so how was working on the film? It's a shit show. Complete I'm awful. Emergency! Emergency! Are you kidding me? All right, all right, listen, 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 listen. We can't what, what, like what kind of operation are you running here? Uh, you know who I am? I am John C. Dickenbaugh's Hollywood megastar. You should be honored to talk to me. I, I, I'm gonna make your year. So act like it. Sorry. 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 Anyways, um, so how? I saw the song.